Google just broke the internet with VO3. We want to look at the tool that's boggling people's minds on social media right now, and it's all because Google announced a suite of tools for AI video at their latest event, Google I.O. What do you think of the event, John? Well, the event is still going on technically. We're, <laughs> we're only here on day two just starting, but uh, I was actually blown away with all the announcements yesterday. Uh, what really struck me, and I don't think has gotten a lot of media attention that I think it deserves, was the Flow Tool announcement because we've not yet seen what an AI-based editing interface might look like. Everyone's familiar with editing tools like Final Cut Pro. We all know what those kind of lin those linear-based editing interfaces look like. But what's an AI interface look like? And this is the first time we've seen that, and it is spectacular. It looks amazing. I think there's going to be a real revolution in editing and editing interfaces, and this is just the beginning of it. Definitely, they've changed the game in a lot of ways, and I think we wanted to start off by looking at their demo videos because their demo videos are really showing off uh, what what the capabilities are for this new. Uh, groundbreaking VO3 tool. I'm John Rogers. And I'm Kai Turner. This ocean, it's a force, a wild, untamed might. And just looking at them, I thought the lip sync is fantastic. I mean, they're doing, they're doing sound, sound effects and, and lip sync audio all in one. And we've never seen anything like this before. The microfilm is in your ticket. They're watching the north exit. Use the service tunnel. As a creator, though, I'd want more control over the voice acting. So I wonder if they'll eventually let you capture voice performances to include in the generation. The AI is multimodal, so I think you should be able to. Uh, the kids' animation was super impressive as well. This potential, there's the potential for that category really gets my mind going. They left behind a, a ball today. It bounced higher than I can jump. What manner of magic is that? And the built-in sound effects are great, but again, as a creator, I wonder how easy it would be to adjust the levels because sometimes the effects are just too pronounced for the scene. But overall, I think there's no doubt that Google has really raised the bar here on the state of the art. And if it wasn't for the 250 a month price tag, I think their competitors would have to shut down. <laughs> uh, bold statement there, Kai. I, I agree. Where were you on the night of the bubble bath? You know, what's interesting is that the live action human actors now really have taken a step forward of overcoming the uncanny valley. Now, we're not there yet, but it is definitely a step forward in that direction. And really what stood out to me was less sort of the human characters in Uncanny Valley and more about the audio and the, the voice overlays. Um, it's definitely still now a little bit of where I'd see some weaknesses. Uh, in these two new technologies. And, and on the animation side, definitely animation is still far ahead in terms of uh, live action and the kind of the commercial viability, I'll put it, for the AI output. Number two, two. For our next film, we start to look at the films that were featured in the Google I.O. event. And this one is called Dear Stranger by Juni Lau. And this is an abstract and surreal piece that plays like a kind of dreamscape. Juni has clearly let her imagination run wild as we move from a futuristic world to the 60s to the cycle of death and rebirth. She calls this film a dream, a memory, a regret, a thank you, and a love letter. And it definitely defies being narrowly defined. I think it's the sort of imaginative piece that can only be made possible with AI. Yeah, Juni is a Chinese filmmaker actually working co kind of cooperatively out of both London and Shanghai, apparently. And what I really loved about this uh, piece is that it shows the multicultural perspective that she has of both sort of West and East coming together. Uh, and and the, from the storytelling perspective, this is a statement about how the love of a daughter and, or a grandparent and a child um, can cross time and space uh, and even parallel worlds in this video and uh, it really comes together very nicely. Now, Google intended to choose to work with three of the absolute top tier names in the AI filmmaking space, and it really shows why Juni is uh, kind of in that elite group. Hey folks, Google's VO3 is making proof of humanity harder than ever. The only way I can think to do it is to talk longer than eight seconds continuously. So there you have it. Give us a like and subscribe. Wait a minute.
So our second film this week is called Train Forward, and it's created by a filmmaker known as AI Talk. And this really wasn't part of the Google event, but this was a filmmaker who, in just two hours of access with the tools, showed what can be done. And uh, you know, it, this is definitely rough. It's done in two hours, uh, but it really is amazing with just two hours of work, one person that this could entirely be a pre scene. They, they output an entire scene, and this could be a great pre for a feature film or a TV show. This could be used and is ready for pitching for other projects. So it is you know, commercially viable, useful output in just two hours of work, and really, I think, shows how far advanced these tools are, and really the productivity improvements that are gonna be possible uh, as they continue to mature. Yeah, this definitely made me laugh. I mean, at one point, He's uh, he's sort of clearing the crowd, and he just starts firing the gun and <laughs> randomly into the crowd. And at another point, uh, the woman he's chasing says hello to him sweetly, and then I think shoots him. And, the <laughs> and then uh, we get into like the, the the story is about the the loop. He's in some kind of a loop. Um, but yeah, like you said, it's it's a great proof of concept and you know for something like this to be done in two hours you you know that if more uh, attention and and planning were put into it you could get some really great results Um, and I wonder it makes me wonder if we'll get a new comedy genre of AI making weird choices and and strange non sequiturs between scenes we're closer to people prompting entire stories because that's also the question of when can you just type in, I want to see a story about a gunfight on a train, um, but we're clearly not there yet, but we're getting closer every day. Number four. Four. This stupid face? Yep, it's mine. And the second of the featured filmmakers from the Google I.O. event is Henry Dabray, a Belgian filmmaker working out of the United States. Uh, and his film is entitled Electric Pink. Now this is a personal narrative about his own inner kind of struggle between his doubts about a film being a filmmaker, about it being creative, uh, about kind of you know darkness and then lightness and kind of kind of being in these two polarized ends of the world. Uh, but Henry's done something really just beautiful here. He's playing with aspect ratios. So when he's in sort of his inner demon world, we're into like a really widescreen uh, uh, cinematic two, three, five aspect ratio. Then when we're in his real world, we're into a more normal kind of cinematic uh, widescreen aspect ratio. So he's playing with th- those aspects. Um, I find personal narratives to be incredibly hard. I've made a few personal narrative films in the past, and to really be effective at it, you have to be kind of honest and put yourself out there, something I was never personally comfortable with. And he's done it so effectively here. I Really kudos, because it's it's hard to do, and he's been very successful with it in this, this piece. Yeah, Henry just goes from strength to strength in his productions. We've seen him developing this anime superhero character, but yeah, using it to tell this this meta narrative about creativity and passing that spark of inspiration to future generations is is as you've said, it's really really impressive what he's done here. Uh, Google was smart to give him free reign and an open brief on this. You know, Henry's a safe pair of hands, and hopefully he's a step closer to building out that full feature or that series for this character. Number five. adopted brothers face to face for the first time in forever. The third film featured at Google I.O. was Dave Clark's Freelancers. Dave and Promise are in the spotlight right now speaking at Cannes and then they've been announcing further rounds of investment. Even with all this activity Dave is staying true to his roots as a filmmaker though and he's creating shorts like this one. I think this must be Dave's take on a Guy Ritchie film. It's the story of two adopted brothers who have these ridiculous careers in uh, secret agents and mercenaries and then what happens to them when they're reunited. It was pretty ambitious of Dave to do a battle scene. Close quarters action is still at the limit of what you can convincingly do with AI video, but he's clearly at the top of his game in this space and it's a fun narrative piece overall. Yeah, this almost feels like it could be the pilot for a TV series uh, or, or a web series going forward. I would love to see these two brothers kind of reunited on the run. The, the video ends with them essentially on the run with 
uh, hit or bounties on their heads. So I could see that being the beginning of what could be a lot of fun episodes to follow. Uh, what really stood out for me beyond what you said, Kai, is that uh, the music and the choice of the soundtrack really stands out well here and works well. One of the characters is a is a uh, punk rock singer, at least has been a punk rock singer in their earlier life, and um, uh, this definitely has a punk rock uh, audio aspect to it. Thanks. That's it for this week. Please like and subscribe. See you next time.